G'day everybody, I'm Type 40 Artist and today I'm going to be talking about Dungeons and Dragons again. So if anybody's seen my previous video on this, uh, I am fairly new to this. So I recently got into this with some work friends um, and it's been a lot of fun so far. So this is my, I think it's my fourth or fifth time playing now. Um, and you know things are starting to get a little bit more interesting so what i'm drawing here is my character cormac he's gone into a um a bit of a strange shop uh called havoc's emporium i believe it was called um so havoc was a fire genasi who owns the shop um cormac He's an Earth Genasi. He's just bought something called the Wand of the Wild. So I believe this is a custom item that the Dungeon Master made for us. Um, it has been uh, useful and a hindrance at the same time in um, the campaigns that we've played. But um, this one was really fun to draw, um, experimenting a little bit with drawing a whole scene and kind of layering the um, background, foreground and midground um, a little bit. So you'll see a little bit of that when coloring. Uh, but I wanted the background to really just be full of stuff. Um, and yeah, just lots of random stuff. Up the top I have put cupboards only because I ran out of things to think of to draw um but uh that's probably laziness on my part but it still fits the part i think and um yeah so as you can see here i've um colored each piece individually and then just put like a blue overlay on the background and then a slightly more opaque blue overlay on uh, Havoc there. So it gives it a bit of a layering effect, I'm um, hoping. And I did actually, actually end up increasing Cormac's size there as well, just because I thought it made a bit more sense. Um, but yeah, moving on to the next one, which was a rather interesting one. Um, we had a, uh, new player join the team. Um, they, they weren't new to Dungeons and Dragons like most of us, they'd played before. Um, so it was interesting to get, uh, somebody there that had played before and had a bit of experience. Um, but he was playing with a brand new character that he made um, specifically for um, the game with us. So his character's name was Grimnir. I believe he was a dwarf. And uh, one of his traits is that he can't turn down a drink. So in this uh, particular campaign, um, somebody opened up one of these barrels that were... Um, laying around and there was barrels everywhere in this uh in this dungeon um we'd gone down there to clear it out for a i believe it was a um team of halflings working a factory and the downstairs was riddled with monsters so we went down there to clean that out found a heap of barrels somebody opened one up and of course um there was beer in there so um Grimnir, of course, started um, drinking the beer, got very drunk, and um, I decided um, I'm going to take one of these beakers I found in a different box um, and use that to um, have a glass or two as well. So Grimnir got very drunk, I got a little bit drunk, and um, of course that affected our um, stats moving forward. Um, so we, every time I rolled, I had to roll with disadvantage, um, which made things uh, very interesting when I tried to do just about anything. There was a lot of um, failed athletics checks, um, running into walls, 
things like that. Um, but it was probably one of the more fun games I've played because it was um, just that little bit less um, serious, I suppose, and uh, was able to have a bit of fun with it. So yeah, it was a lot of fun playing that game and it was a lot of fun drawing this one as well because I've um, gotten to draw a character that, uh, that we played with that I knew, I had a good idea about what they looked like. Um, because one, the um, person playing Grimnir was very descriptive and two, um, they actually even provided a um, reference picture of Grimnir. So I was able to draw him up. With um, Havoc in the last one, there was a um, description of him to some extent, but it was vague. But as he wasn't a um, playable character, I decided I can take some liberties with him anyway. But this one, I had a pretty good idea of what he should look like. So um, yeah, it was fun to be able to draw somebody else other than me, because in the previous video, most people were just silhouettes. I did contemplate putting a silhouette in here for this one, but it just didn't work with the comp composition. There was um, another person there drinking with us. Um, his name was, or oh, the character's name was Kryn. And there was somebody else in the background just ignoring us drink um, because she wasn't interested in the drinks at all. Later on, I did use some of my um, charm and deception to get her to have a glass as so she was starting to um, get a little bit drunk and she didn't get to the point where she had to roll to disadvantage, but it was a bit of fun role playing as well. And this one, I uh, this is a mission that I played just um, last weekend. Um, well, actually, it won't be last weekend when this video comes out. But uh, at the time of recording this, it was last weekend. Uh, and this one, um, yeah, it was one where they really taken the training wheels off, I feel. So that was a lot of fun to be able to play one where it wasn't quite as easy as some of the other ones. Um, so this is a, I believe it's pronounced a uh, lesion. Um, and this is the um, monster we faced when investigating some um, woods that had been um, reporting some lost uh, lumberers and um, lost workers. So we went in there to investigate, found um, this lesion and three direwolves. Um, I had to be very careful of what to do, a um, lot, lot of disengaging and things like that because uh, pretty much one hit from this thing would have wiped me out. Um, or it, it almost, I did get hit once and it almost wiped me out. I was left with like two hit points. So that was um, one of the more stressful ones that I've um, been involved with so far, which was good, it was a lot of fun, put a little bit of, um, you know, threat into the game, which is nice. Um, and yeah, um, I'm uh, hoping to definitely um, in, increase my strength. This is one where I did use my Wand of the Wild, um, which made me um, larger. Um, so I ended up being actually about as large as the um, Lucian, but um, my character strength isn't all that great. So it didn't turn out to be anything um, super useful, but I did get to um, when, when using any kind of hand combat or grappling, I did get to roll with advantage, so that was um, 
that, that was an advantage, but um, my strength really isn't anything to write home about for this character. So, um, Cormac's strength, I should say, isn't anything to write home about. So it didn't do a lot of help, um, but it was still fun. I, I quite enjoyed using the Wand of the Wild just to see what it comes up. Basically, you roll a D100 and it's got a um, list of different things that it could do. And um, yeah, it's completely random and maybe a help, maybe a hindrance, may do nothing at all. Uh, once in a previous um, game that I played, um, it gave me a beard of feathers, which had no impact to anything at all. So, um, and then another time I played, it made everything vulnerable to piercing, which was um, quite useful. Um, and another time I used it, it um, drained, uh, I, I had to roll a d10 and then um, whatever number was on that die, I had to drain um, that from everything in the room and I gained that. So that was good to me, but not so good to my teammates, but um, still a lot of fun using it. So yeah, this is the final reveal of the lesion. Uh, had a lot of work in those horns, just adding some texture manually, just by um, drawing the curve lines, I suppose, made it look very woody. But um, yeah, that is uh, it for now. So if you did like what you've seen, um, don't forget to like, subscribe, um, all that good stuff. And uh, I'll see you guys in the next video.